What up? It's your boy T Bear in reaction. Today is Wrestling Wednesday. This week's Wrestling Wednesday is is um dedicated to a legendary wrestler we sadly lost this past week. The in the uh, leg, uh, one half of the legendary uh Samoan wrestling duo the Wasamoa and Sika Noe sadly passed away this week at age seventy nine. Sika is also is the father of the late Rosie uh I'm trying to remember his real, real name, but uh, Rosie, who from uh, of a uh, three minute warning and one half and one and a half of the tag team with with um, the Hurricane, and also the father of current wrestler and former WWE champion Roman Reigns as well too. So, RP to the OG Tribal Chief Seeker and Noe as well too, one of the higher preacher of the infamous Noe family. What is uh, Rosie's real name? I feel like she know his real name. So anyway. Oh, this is real name again. Matt Noe, yep. Uh, eh. Anyway, so anyway, RIP to them as well too. So anyway, that being said, we're going we to do WrestleMania for the one, for the, the original OG Travel Chief right there. And... Hot takes, get your hot takes. I didn't know hot takes. It was hot takes that that Pond dropped the hot takes this past four, pissed this past some four days ago. So here we go. So the top of the hot kick is the most same WWE take I ever seen. So I can't wait to see these takes. You know me. The video is like eight minutes long, but with me and my response and rebuttal to some of these hot takes, it might be longer. So without further ado, let's check it out. I guess it was playing while I was previewing it, but anyway. You know these takes be wild, some be agreeable, and not top 10, they just like, what the fuck. So here we go. Well, Dudley, Dudley is not honoring Bray Wyatt by bringing his game back. They are trying to make money, and that's why it's not sitting right with me. I love to be wrong about this one. And the fact that, I was about to say, you tripping to say you love to be wrong about this one. And, well, start love to be wrong, because I feel like it is not. It is pretty much... It's pretty much uh, Taylor Rotundo, but also known as Bo Dallas, continuing the story that he is killing his brother the legacy that he planned to do, especially if you saw the documentary as well, too. But let's see what Plano has to say. Let's get it. This might be the most insane, the worst hot take I've seen in the history of making these videos. And it comes from Twitter, and it says that the WWE is not honoring Bray Wyatt by bringing his gimmick back. They are trying to make money, and that's why it's not sitting right with me. I'd love to be wrong about this one. I want to go ahead and say I don't think that this gimmick would have been brought back had Bo Dallas, had JoJo, had the rest of Bray Wyatt's family not been okay right. with bringing it back. Exactly. It just does not make sense. If you really think about it, they all believe that bringing this gimmick back and making it come to life, making Bray Wyatt's creation come to life and live forever is what they wanted. Yes. And when you think about all that, it makes you say that this is not just a quick cash money grab. The WWE does not need to bring this back in order to make money. They've been making billions of dollars exactly. in the last couple of years. I do not think they're worried about making some extra money for merchandise with this gimmick. And on top of that, all the proceeds are going to Bray Wyatt's family and taking care of them. So I just don't understand how you can have a take like this, a hot take like this, and be serious about it. I think this is just an insane and bad take. And I gotta say that I completely disagree with it the next right, before I go any further I will say about this I am in, in my opinion you know a lot of websites are jumping the gum claiming their heels I feel like they need to be tweeners they need to be loved by both the face fans and the hills fans. not just the hill fans only the face fans as well too should enjoy this is a dedicated to somebody that the WWE fans all together enjoy and love please do not make this one-sided that's all I'm gonna say do not make this one-sided Make this thing for all both sides of fans, as well as of course the fans who don't care about line going to do whatever they want. But the ones who are are you know gun hold about the the whole about K fan and and us and the line system, let them let's both let us both uh, enjoy it. I mean, have them go against the heels as well as faces as well too. Right now, it's like they go into the direction with the guy they talk about next, which is Chad Gable as well too. So there's that. Anyway, Chad Gable cannot lose again. Or all hope is lost. Um, even though he's a hill, and I don't like to sit, seem like I'm side with him this one, but 
So I gotta say it like this: all K fan gimmicks and alignments, everything else aside, since I'm not saying it in the group that will give me with certain dickheads will give me a problem with it. That being said, uh, they're true. They, he, she, he, she, I want to say all hope, all hope is lost. But at the same time, they can't. They gotta snap this loser streak as well too. I'm not sure how they're gonna do it. They look like it looks like I gotta agree. Stop rooting for the Creed brother soon because they're gonna be a song streak. Because you know he, the the, the original Academy ain't don't want nothing to do with Chad. And so be it as well too because he's been an asshole to him. But it looks like Creed brothers might be in um. Might be roll with them pretty soon as well too, but let's see what uh uh Polano say about that. Let's get it. Tate comes from Bullet Crazy, and they say Chad Gable cannot lose again, or all hope is lost. My bro, do you know that the guy is not alive? He's been murdered, man. He's gone. Oh Chad yeah. Gable by the by the way, this is made before uh, this past roll, so I might this. I think this has been made before the past roll, so anything. That happens since Raw or recently NXT is no void about this. So, yeah. Moves again because he can't wrestle again because he's done so. The White Six took care of him. Jay Demon Play says that Chad Gable's storyline is fizzling out. And on a serious note, I do think that Chad Gable kind of being turned on by Otis on Raw was the wrong decision. I feel like that should have happened at Clash at the Castle. Is that, yeah. <laughs> now, we was waiting for a Clash. They, like, they're... I feel like they was melt. They we we thought we was gonna get that clash, and they milked it. To be honest, they did. So I don't know what they're gonna do with this as well. Too I many, like I said, they they got something going on with the white six and everything. He's been so that could be like the next few going on with him and his new cameo was gonna be the Curies for making the white six. Tweener ball in the face side of the tweener or the, of the tweener of the tweener uh great area. So yes, so yeah. so there's that. I think it would have had a much louder reaction. I don't get the reason for waiting until Monday. And also, uh, Otis didn't really beat him up. He just kind of pushed him to the ground. I feel like I want to say a beat down where Otis actually got upset. But anyways, I'm going to wait and see where it goes, you know, because Triple H loves to cook. He loves to have this slow and build up with all these storylines. So I'm going to wait and see what happens, especially with Chad Gable being, you know, shot to death or whatever happened to him. <laughs> I'm going to wait and see what goes on next. The next hot take says that when Solo turns on Roman Reigns, he should say, I did it for The Rock. And that's obviously a playback to Rikishi. That would be funny. I don't think he's going to mimic exactly how Rikishi said it. You know, I ain't for heel turns or whatever like that, but it would be funny he say that shit. Back in 2001. Oh, he's jokingly that saying that he did it He did it when he uh, cost you a title, at, cost you a chance for the winning title last time in Clash, but still at the same time, yeah. It was 2000, I don't know. But I can see him saying he did it for The Rock in a much more serious tone as a nice callback to his dad doing the same thing. So that would be nice. I agree with this hot take. I do hope it happens. The next hot take says that CM Punk's injury at the Royal Rumble is a blessing in disguise. What a butterfly effects we I will say somewhat true. Somewhat true. And to be honest, it was somewhat true. We had now. I don't think that's the case, honestly. Like, yes, I love the fact that The Rock came back. I thought that was great. And and, and I love how Drew McIntyre's whole storyline has been playing out. But I just think that CM Punk not getting injured would have been better because he would have already had that main event. I think the feud with Seth Rollins was going to cook. And like I said, he was going to get that main event. We don't know if CM Punk is going to main event WrestleMania 41. We don't know. So because of that, I don't want to say this was a blessing in disguise. Yes, there were some good things that came out of it. And the WWE made some good pivots. But that does not mean this was a blessing. Scene. If I had the choice of it not happening, I would have preferred it not to happen. Wavy says that Damien Priest has no aura. Not sure if that's a hot take, though. That That is a hot take. I would consider that a hot take. And I would say that I felt that way when he was the money in the big holder. But now I don't feel that way. I think Damien Priest, after winning the World Heavyweight Championship, somehow, I don't know how, but the guy got aura. And I kind of vibe with him being the champion. So I would disagree with you, that's Wavy. Uh, Ryan says that Finn Balor is better without the Judgment Day. And I got to agree with this hot take. I think Finn Balor just does not fit. It doesn't work. I feel like he's much better off as a baby face who has the demon character. I think a lot of people love that demon character, and Finn just works better as a well, baby face. Well, unfortunately, the light's not going to happen. It was like it's going to possibly be Damian Priest to her face because, like I said, this was made before uh, this past role. And you saw what happened in Raw that if Seth, if Seth loses, he uh, he can't wrestle with Titan more, but if Damien loses, he has to leave Judgment Day. And I feel like it's going to be possibly Damien's priest exit from Judgment Day on account of Finn. So who knows? Let's keep going. 
at least in the WWE. There's just something about this group. He doesn't feel like the leader at all. You got Dom. He's getting a lot of reactions. You got the Live and Dom thing going on between those two. Rhea Ripley gets the loudest reactions. Now Damian Priest has his aura. And I feel like Finn has gotten lost in the shuffle. Maybe. Maybe that's and why. He's recent, and recently that's probably why they got the. They gave him and JD a tag team. Gave him they did R Truth and Miz dirty like that actually going to leave the group and why he's trying to destroy them with Liv Morgan. That could be a good storyline that they bring out for Finn Balor. Phenomenal Figure says that Jay Uso needs the money in the bank or he will get lost in the shuffle. I would say not get lost up, but I would rather he be the one to win money in the bank. I would rather him be it. Hopefully he gets himself a cash and not be a failed one. Who knows? A ton of people want to see Jey Uso win the Money in the Bank briefcase, or what, what do you call it? The Yeet in the, the Bank briefcase. Bank, yes. I just, I kind of don't, to be honest with you guys. Oh, I think that Jey Uso doesn't necessarily need it. I feel like him walking around the briefcase would be all right. I, yes, it would sell merch, so I understand the idea of making him, you know, have the briefcase. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I feel I like, like somebody like Andrade, somebody with Carmelo. I Hay, say, I say, I would like uh, the the bank to happen for him. Somebody like somebody like that could really benefit, or even LA Knight if he wasn't going after the US title. Those are names I would rather see as the Money in the Bank holder, not Jey Uso. I think Jey Uso just needs to actually win a match for the World Championship. You know, I'd be fine with that. But anyways, I do think Jey Uso, at the end of the day, will come out victorious at Money in the Bank. And he will hold that briefcase and then go on to cash in and become a world champion. The next hot take says the five match PLE does not work. A lot of people been slaying that. A lot of people say that it's, it's like this. Uh, it's like it's a 50-50 right here. Wow. Quality over quantity. But a lot of people like the quantity more and a lot of people like the quality more. We'll see. Let's see what Plum will say about this. As we know, Triple H, when he was booking NXT, he would always do this. He never overbooked. Yeah, he would he only did. have five matches yeah, at fast. most. And a lot of people liked it with NXT, but they're not loving it with the WWE, mostly because there's so much more talent True. in the WWE. And they feel like because of that, so many people are left off the pay-per-view not having matches. So I understand the concern, that's, that's but I do want to defend it just a little bit. I feel like the fact that they're having a PLE every three weeks kind of doesn't make it too bad because every exactly. three weeks is kind of quick. So you don't want maybe nine matches matches at all the PLEs, mm -hmm. but I do want to say five is kind of a little too little. I think the perfect number would be six or maybe seven at most, mm -hmm. at least six, seven at most. I think that's the sweet spot. So Triple H should start looking into changing the five match PLE into six or seven. Oh, the next sweet. hot take says that Austin Theory's run after his eventual face turn will elevate him into a mega. I, nah, this is the first turn I've been waiting. And it's just, I, here's the thing. Since so the fact that Judgment Day, uh, R Truth, and Miz lost their title, I hopefully soon Theory and Waller lose the title. So Theory has face for so Theory and Waller had a few with Theory turn face because men it's been they've been teasing her a lot of time. Hopefully it's a DIY as well too. But anyway, but yes, he needs this. He needs this man. He he needs this man. He needs this. He needs a combos to get him back where he is. And if a face run do it, I'm here for it. Let's I mean for any, I'm here for a majority any face turn, but this one I'm definitely here for for sure. I just start and I completely agree. I'm gonna go ahead and make my own hot take and say by next year, this time next year, I think Austin Theory will either hold the money of the big briefcase or he'll be a WWE champion, the world champion by that point. I don't see. know how, but I we just got see. a feeling that it, is it my hot happen. take. You guys could hold me to that in a year from now. McGuire says that I think we should get more heel versus heel rivalry. No, I, I no, because I, I I'm not gonna care. No, all right. That's that's it's one sided because it's one sided and at time it gets too confusing for fans. So no. And a lot of people do seem to agree. You got 48 likes, and I've seen other hot takes that said the same thing, but I don't agree with this Thank hot you, take. I feel like the, the the baby face versus the heel is what people need to see. It just makes sense. You need exactly. to really cheer for somebody to overcome what's Thank going on. You. I could see anti-hero versus anti-hero, like CM Punk and Drew McIntyre. See, I feel like you're both anti-heroes. So that true. A lot of people, I feel like that. You know the way Drew McIntyre comes is. I feel like that. True, but. But, 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 like I said, Hill versus Hill is like, you have nobody to root for. I mean, unless you really love villains that much, that's the difference. And that's why I feel it's one side where a face at first a face or anti hero here arrow can work as well, too. Now I mean, because it's like, it's more folks who root for the faces and, 
and boo the hills more than folks who are vice who are bizarre or minded that root for the hills and hate faces. It's and it, it, I mean as much as you it seems like at times it seems like more people like hills more faces. There's still the dynamic of the faces getting more cheer getting cheered more than the hills at times as well too. We almost had we almost was bizarre like bizarre world like as well too during the later 2010s, but it's, and you know here and there with A and W, but majority of the time. It goes back to normal at all the time. It, it, it maybe once a movement happened, but always come back to normal where it's faces over heels. Uh, regardless. Anyway, let's keep going. That works, but just having two bad guys, I don't think it's going to work. The audience is going to kind of be confused as mm -hmm. to who to cheer for. Exactly. So I do think Thank you got to have an anti-hero. Thank you ain't just me. Ain't much of my own little... Uh, Personal narrative is he said it too, so there you go. Or a baby face, at least in the mix. Not me says that a TNA versus WWE War Games match would go hard. And maybe this was a decade ago. I don't know if I feel the same way now. I just feel like TNA's top stars don't really compete with the WWE top stars. I wouldn't mind seeing a War Games match with the TNA guys and the NXT top guys. That sounds mm. like a lot of fun. I would like to see a War Games team, NXT than TNA right now. <laughs> Speaking of Survivor Series, Juan says that I miss mm. the old Survivor Depends. Series, and I do too. The traditional five-on-five -five tag team elimination matches. Are I feel like they should have both. They should have both. They should have both the war games and the traditional. Don't that's don't just be war games only. Just have that both for real. They should have both. Better in my opinion than the war games matches. I kind of don't even want to see the war games. I think they should bring that only for specific matches when they really need to bring it out. I feel like forcing people into it kind of doesn't work. It makes it feel a little over. Or it makes it feel at least this year. Don't do it on women's one just to do it. You gotta have one for the the bloodline civil war. But yeah, leave that for the Bloodline Civil War only this year and still do the traditional tag of slow with that. I mean, no ladies want to be honest, to be honest. I like the ladies doing anything, but no ladies want to share. Just because unless there's a really a reason to have the ladies to do it. A little too corny. Also, at the end of the day, I really don't even like it too much. I feel like the fact that you got to wait for everyone to get in the ring kind of just slows things down and doesn't, and it's kind of boring until everyone's in the ring, which makes it very hard to book these kind of matches and make them enjoyable for the long haul. So I want to say bring back old Survivor Series and only use war games, not even at Survivor Series, but just whenever you need it. Whether if it's for SummerSlam, I don't know, or Raw, I don't care. Just don't use it at Survivor Series and make it a staple of that PLE. The Art King says on Michael Cole and Pat McAfee are the JR and Lawler of today. I would agree. I think that's a good... Yeah, I was waiting. I wanted to wait and see what he said because I was going to say the same thing because I, I, I dare kill him, man. There, there are definitely the modern age Jerry Lawler because it's like Pat McAfee is not necessarily a hill commentary. He just dare to have fun and, and be like with or opposed depends on what he is as well too as well. Uh, and there be kill they, them two as a duo have been killing it. I love it good comparison to make i think if anything i like michael cole and pat mcafee just a little more mm -hmm. i'm not even trying to be biased like i watched jr and lawler i like them but they were kind of like like lawler oh, was just talking about different. puppies all the time like, <laughs> it was kind of like come on i man. get what you mean and that's that's understandable for sure so i do think that michael cole and pat mcafee are great as well as wade barrett and mm -hmm. Corey graves i think right now the commentators are kind of fire in the yeah day. True. to be honest true waiting Corey's killing it uh, Vic and Booker T killing them. Booker T's hilarious as well, too. So, yeah. Shout out to the clutch. So, yeah. WWE. And the last hot take comes from Ryan, who says that Ricochet is bald. And all no the shit. That is, yes, that is true. Anyways, that is it for the video. No hey guys, shit. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> what the hell kind of thing was that? But speaking of Ricochet, hopefully, you know, he is. this is more so like he's taking a break for him. And Samantha, he comes back. Oh, even he had to, before he come back to hell, or it'd be cool, he could have it like a, a WWE version of his Prince Puma gimmick as well, too, as a comeback. But other than that, these was actually good takes, and, and um, still took, took longer than, still took longer than the video did as well, too, but at the same time, these was good takes. It wasn't too many bad ones, other than that first one with the right one. I get why he said that, because a lot of people are saying that as well, too, but at the same time, it wasn't, it, 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 this is everything the family wants them to do, so this is that as well, too. And good thing, and, us, and us, a lot of things, some of these were, like I said, it was made for the past world, this is on me, because I didn't know he, he put a, he did a hot take, so I, I kind of fell off, fell off with, uh, pull out, not purposely, but, you know, 
sometimes the algorithm ain't the best at time because you know Twitter algorithm is shit right now. It's not even funny. Other than that, if you like my reaction, like, share, subscribe my YouTube channel. It's your boy T Breast signing off. One love.